Yuji, I just want to ask you who this is you're doing the portrait of. It's Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. I think he is the father of the of the constitution of the state, isn't he? Yep. He's given, like, he's given that credit. Yeah, and I like this. People are equal. Yes. <laughs> yes. I hope it's them too. <laughs> I hope so too. You know, it's not only <clears throat> about uh, a person or what it is, but it's mainly about how, how to do the portrait. Okay. It would be different in the 19th century and it would be different in uh, older periods. And we are living in a time when, uh, <clears throat> again, we have a, we are trying to to get it in a new way. So my way is a reduction to make it as simple as possible. As uh, Jimmy Rafna once said, to make a long story short. Okay. <laughs> That's why you start with the big wheel. Yeah, this is uh, a, a big wheel. Uh, gives you big forms. It's the same like a painter would use the big brush as long as he can, not to go too early to a small, right. to get the big strokes. So that's something similar. If you are using a, a, a big wheel, you have to think in larger forms. To, uh, and also uh, to cut uh, in a way the wheel is talking to you. Okay. To follow the wheel. So you start with the, the structure, the big forms, the big form. architecture of the face. Also, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, we both are trained as yeah. Classical yes. starter, so yeah. we know that we started with the skull to understand what's underneath the skin. So I, when I look at somebody, I see his bones, the construction of, of the head. Now this portrait is a little bit different than many of the portraits you make in that you often do profiles, and this is a three-quarter view. I have two more plates prepared and both are profiles. Both are profiles, okay. <laughs> so I made this. You start uh, with the hard one first. I don't know if it's a hard one, but it's some... <laughs> it's a new one. It's an it's a, it's a, a, a image I never did before, so I'm uh, interested in that. So you can use a wheel either cutting deep or doing it softer by moving it sideways. Can you all see in the back? If somebody wants it, that's a great spot if somebody wants to move in there.
diamond wheel. Yes? Yeah. In the past, uh, we used uh, silicon carbide wheels mm -hmm. and uh, also very rough wheels, but you had to correct them all the time. Always dress them and Always shape dress them. them. Yeah. So half the time was spent by, by uh, correcting and improving the wheel. And the same while with copper wheel? With copper wheel is the same. Mm -hmm. While today you have diamond wheels and uh, they stay forever. They are, have the same shape always. And Also notice you're cutting on the back of the wheel, or almost on the underside, a little bit to the back. I'm uh, trained as a copper wheel engraver, so I'm used to work from beneath. Uh, and if it's a flat piece of glass like a plate, so you can of course cut it from above also. Mm -hmm. But if you have a vessel, then you have to do it from beneath. Okay. You could hardly see it. And of course, yeah, a vessel, you would have no view. So I'm trying to make a, a sketch that you have something to print. Ah, okay. But you're not cutting it with the print in mind. You're cutting it to make the engraving. No, in that case, I, it's a it's a base for a print. In fact. Okay. Yeah. We started this when I first met Harvey Littleton. He was printing from glass plates, and it was 1985 in Austria, and I started to do my first engraving and printed it. And since then I'm using it because it's a very good way for the students to get immediately a result. You know, they are making a plate and it takes an hour and then they can print it and have variations of color. And uh, it's not uh, such a long process. We don't have much time. We have either two weeks or one week to do a lot of work. So there is always a question, when shall I stop? Because you can work a long time, but you can also do only a few uh, cuts and then it's up to you what you will do with the colors and how we well we can always print it and then clean the plate off and give it back to you and have you that's, cut some that's more that's true absolutely yeah, that's true
So when you first learned engraving, and you come from a family of people who are cutters, yeah. right? Decorative cutting, brilliant cutting. You didn't start with portraits. Not, not in, in the beginning, it's because, but I was always uh, interested in in doing portraits. So from my childhood, so it was a logical step to follow my countryman Dominic Wieman, who was an excellent portrait engraver. And you knew of Dominic Wieman even as a child. I, I learned when I was an apprentice at the factory about him. Because he, he was trained in the same factory in Harakov as I was. Okay. Yeah. Only 150 years earlier? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was born 1800 and I was born 1928. So 128 years. Okay. Uh, years later. So when did you start really developing your new portraiture? I think uh, the time came when I was uh, at the Academy of Applied Art in Prague and I was trained as a sculptor and uh, I did uh, not only a glass but also reliefs for bronze casting and in that time uh, we had often to, to, uh, to solve the problem of a portrait, either as a relief or, or as a, a sculpture. And in 1964, I, I started to take part on competition for coins. I okay. made, uh, and again, it was uh, almost every coin was a portrait. Not really a queen in our country, but another, you know, a person to celebrate. Yeah. So I'm, in fact, uh, known as a... Uh, doing medals in the way of glass uh, carving or glass engraving. And this makes me different from all the other colleagues. Who so are you start with intaglio. We start yeah, I'm starting. Moving. I'm, I'm, if I'm doing a design for a metal, so I'm, so I'm carving the plaster. Okay. Yeah. And then you take a cast of that. Then that it's back and forth. Get a positive. And then okay. it's uh, goes to a foundry and they will uh, either uh, make a bronze casting or they will reduce it for a struck uh, metal. How many coins have you designed? I mean, I, I took part in, uh, I, I'm doing it now almost 50 years, mm -hmm. every competition. Uh, and so I have more than 1,000 uh, uh, plaster <laughs> molds, and I got the first prize about something about 20, 20 times. Even this is a lot, you know. This is <laughs> you cannot win every competition, of course. <laughs> but it's a good addition to this glass. Uh, to my glass program. So I think, Marshall, I, I keep, I leave it to you now. Are you yeah, sure? It, yeah. As, as you said, it, we can come back and do some, some details later, but... Okay. Should we do it red, white, and blue? Do it as you <laughs> like. <laughs> okay. 
You're going to engrave some more, though, right? While I'm doing I'm, this? Yeah, I'm doing, now I'm going to the profile, as you said. This is a, this is a Salvador Dali, the painter. This is easy to recognize by this muscle. And he's an old friend. You've, you've engraved all, him before. All my friends, yes. I'm doing all my friends.
usually I'm making it kind of corny. Yeah. Uh, making it kind of corny. I'm doing red, white, and blue. Good. Okay. <laughs> as long as you say good. It's, I think it suits to him because he was uh, close to the French Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> you can almost say he invented America. Yeah. Okay, if we got the pressure right, we won't break your engraving. <laughs> yeah, be careful. <laughs> Let's see. All right, that one's a maybe a little hokey. know about the printmaking process. I don't know. Usually you said you worked with uh, Harvey. With, uh, Harvey Littleton. Harvey Littleton in 1985. Yes. So. And I came to Pilchak the same year and I started to do it every year since then. And I first worked with Yerji in 98 and um, and I thought the idea of printing on glass it's crazy <laughs> because I was a printmaker and you print it on copper or aluminum because you can't hurt it. Whereas if under high pressure you'll break glass. So what is it that you find that changing the images from glass as opposed to your other um to tell you the truth, mostly I find it intriguing because they're Yerji's images. <laughs> they're oh, really okay. they're really beautiful. Um as a process, it's not better or worse, just, just different. There are some limitations of what you can do. You can't use real high pressure and go in really deep. But, um, and we don't have big rollers. There's limits to what we can do. So I can't, for example, white color into his cuts and then extract it because that would take a lot more pressure and it would, we'd run the risk of breaking the glass. So a lot of it tends to be relief printing. We can get some detail in there. We got some detail out of the nose and the eyes. You might have seen me rubbing it with my fingers into some of the shallow spots. So there's a certain amount of that you can do, but. Uh, theoretically, glass is good in compression, so, you know. Um, and that's why we use the frame to protect it. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they have a right, right. And you've got good pusher felts and a lot of, a lot of uh, cushion to it. Really? I've never tried to push it to the edge. I, yeah. So um, we tend to use quarter inch plate here. And at Pilchuck, um, they use quarter inch and three eighths, which is really thick. Um, how thick do you print? Uh, like half inch. Yeah, like half inch. Okay.
Ahoy. You need another one? <laughs> another one. <laughs> You're too fast. No, it's just a demo, you know. It's You're making printing plates instead of... Uh, of course. Engravings. You yeah. want The last one will be... Uh, An engraving? More engraving, okay. deep engraving. I'm trying to... Uh, I leave it here. That'll be good there. So, the, this last plate is a, again a great friend of mine, Orwell, and this is the most abstract uh, phase I've ever done. Right. Just uh, this few lines. As I said, uh, my friends, <laughs> friends. I, uh, if you know George Orwell and his vision of about the future, and, right. oh. I think he was saying George Orwell and his impression from the incise lines, from the cut lines. It's got to be soft enough. If it's not wet, it'll tear. If it's wetted and then blotted so it's not sopping wet. Um, and typically with printmaking, you're using oil-based inks and the water and the oils. There's a certain amount of resistance and pressure to take it. Um, these are all water-based inks. We could run it through wet and it would make nice bleeding effects. You know, everything could blur together. Um, there's lots of variables. Um, we don't have an especially big palette here, and using the rollers, I always try and do something a little compositional with the way it gets rolled on, but um, if we had a lot more time to play with it, we could come up with a lot more. Things. But um, this isn't especially great paper either. It's domestic etch or something like that. But if it was a nice, thick, rag paper, we'd probably get much better effects trying to get some of these cuts. Thicker paper just can handle the pressure better. I might have some at home. We used to have a nice big selection, but over the last 10 years, here she seems to all up. Well, here's these classes. Basically, there is no difference. On the, uh, the biggest difference is that with diamond, you work much faster. Okay. And with uh, uh, copper wheels, 
and great, much finer. Oh, much finer. Much finer. So for, we were visited yesterday Takeo, uh, the excellent engraver here in Koning. Different. And he would say a lot of his you can't do um, uh, the fine details with I diamond I printed wheels. before because these are you all have separate cuts. So use like a, the leaves cup falling, of wheels. snowflakes, or little yeah. openings. So maybe just hitting it Otherwise, all with one color uh, and going uh, in and, and trying to get some of the uh, detail out of these. Diamond is replacing the everything. Cheese. Replacing stone wheels, uh, replacing silver carbide so wheels, to find and, uh, it with the rollers, also but, uh, uh, copper wheels. Very often when and he really is using uh, diamond when it's he a really is a shape. Okay. But uh, all for the, the tiny the details, you need over it. to work with uh, You can get a lot more copper. happening within the engraving. Mm -hmm. Like I say, this is that, um, fractured. There's an organic quality. You know, not broke it, but fractured image. Is it only diamond? Or you know, there's a certain kind of line? It's. It's always a question because you, if you are using diamonds, so you are more cutting. If you are using uh, uh, copper wheels, you are more smoothing out. You know, this is a difference. It's, like you're, it's, like you're it's it's more like uh, you know you are using the grit and it's uh, it makes a soft a soft surface. While diamond is harder, okay. even if it's fine, maybe it's shiny, but it's always. Thank you. I'm going to give you Mr. Jefferson again. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a little coarser in the way it cuts. Yeah. Okay. But you have different, different yes. coarseness. You know, fine, fine diamond wheels or coarse diamond wheels. So. I haven't done it that much. You. But have. they are uh, more expensive. Course. You are saving time, mm -hmm. but you have to pay more money for the wheel. If you are working with, with other wheels, stone wheels if or couple of wheels, so it's cheaper, but you are, you are, are losing time by uh, uh, sharpening it again Sometimes and again too, you and want to make sure shaping you it. Anything and, under the yeah. bed, just a little splinter of glass is enough. I touch the crack of the plate. You know, so if, um, if you're doing it with half inch thick glass and your cutting is the same depth, you know, you're probably a lot better off as far as being able to apply pressure. Um, and again, these water-based inks aren't optimal for that, you know. Um, but what we've done is often just roll stuff up, rub it in with our fingers, run it through the press to get the surface and get what we can from that, then go back in, lay another sheet of clean paper over it. And, and rub it with your fingers, and you can pull out lots of beautiful cutting. And, and this, there's a lot of beautiful marks in the wheel in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did you try also engraving? Did, no, never. I never tried. Um, can do. I'll get you a piece of paper. You want to? You want to rub one of these? Give it a try. I, I, I do, uh, casting. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I would Very check in the rough. office. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go down there in a second. Yeah. Fact, you want to wash that off? Mm -hmm. Let's try to keep... With a flexible shaft. Yes. The hand tool. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's also a way how to do engraving. I'm going to move that out of the way so you can get into the sink here without, uh, without getting ink on our paper. And then give it a good scrub, mm -hmm. and I'll get some back with some clean, uh, just regular Xerox paper, but some, some pencils and markers. So, uh, Marshall is here. Yeah. So this three plates are really like a medium for the printing. The last thing is a you can set you up a here on deeper the engraving. The blotting paper? It's. I think it's going to be so thick you're not going to be able to get a rubbing out of it. But you can, you're welcome to try it. Absolutely. This is nice and thin. If we had a, a beautiful tissue or a rice paper, uh, would be something else. But, but like everything here, we're going to be 
improvising. So, so I'll take that. Here's a, the and last play. The last play. Do you want to grab, oh, you can do Jefferson? And oh, here, I'll have you do that no, one. No, I'm now uh, going to do uh, Kafka. This is Orwell. Right. Let's uh, clean this off and you can see the, we'll pass it around. So this is a solid piece, a deep engraving, but uh, as I said, everything is about the composition. It's, it's a picture of Kafka, but very, very uh, in a transformed in an abstract way. And uh, what's important to me is how I fix Passes the around. image into the frame. Uh, the outlines and also the deep parts. Usually your Orwell reminds me of your Lao Tse a little bit. Yeah? Yeah? You see? <laughs> going to get just the edges of the big the big cuts but um, with a finer paper and a more subtle material like a, and then you might be able to actually pull but to get the kind of texture you get in the cut like this to see the marks of the wheel those kind of fine cuts it's going to be difficult doing it that way but depending on how you cut your your glass you can emphasize it towards that like I say um, this kind of cutting is a little more challenging to print. You know, when it's a series of separate cuts like that. I may not be up to the job today. <laughs> Whereas I think that the engravings themselves look terrific. And they're really beautiful if they're edge lit, edge lit, so you get highlights and shadow areas. Um, even a composition that's made of all these cuts, almost like a brush, you know, calligraphy or something. So. Try something different. Maybe try some of your Italia. <laughs> if I just. Right. This would be like leaf printing, where you're, you're picking most of the stuff off the high points. Um, we could print like that with just using your hand, the back of a spoon, um, anything like that, just to pick the high points up. But um, in traditional sort of copper plate printing like this, we'd be wiping the ink in, wiping the surface clean, pulling all the detail out of the incised lines.
course, in a small space like this, it's pretty easy to turn everything blue or red or whatever color you're using. I'm sorry. Why oh, it's so quiet now? You don't know the fall off. Well, what I'm trying to do is a little bit more like the traditional Italio printing. To go Somebody with has cutting. my round wheel. Oh. Round wheel? Round wheel. It's a big Italio. Italio is. Italian you leave a little bit around it, or do you have Well, I would have a. I'd probably have a card. And I would literally, yeah, it's, it, you, you won't get a lot of subtlety within, in a typical, well, it depends on the line. If you're doing a sugar wrench or an open uh, bite it's or, a, you know, it's, um, um, yeah, this, you can get different textures, all kinds of different textures. It's kind of uh, very often it's excited line. It doesn't have feeling to be, that you know, are it's just line. So. going be. It's good to have some printmakers in the, think, in the class. I think very often people aren't. Familiar. So this one, I'm just going to do. And see, our roller is so small. I'm going to roll about this so far and use up all the, all the oh, ink. Oh, I meant. Okay. Yeah. So Only I the profile is, is transfer different. The same design. So sometimes I'm uh, working with the edge of the wheel, and sometimes with the with the, the round shape. Uh huh. To, um, to see how deep in just a single pure line you could get. Because again, with the wheel, even as fine as some of these are, it's still a pretty open. Get that raised. Yeah. All right. well it pulls the color out of those lines. Somewhat. Can I have one of those blank white sheets on top there? On top of your rubbing? It can be two. Got a little bit more out by, by hand printing. So. That to me is a more interesting print. I would have to play a lot to get something 
better with those. I love the engraving of Jefferson, but that's a really concise. rollers to cover the sort of surface with. Like I say, you roll down if you um get a pencil for a second and I'll just show you. Make a little mark like that. You start here at the top of the plate. You roll this far, you've got about half the plate. And what you've done is you've deposited ink. You've left ink wherever the glass has been cut away. And if you keep rolling, you're just gonna redeposit that image on the lower half of the, the plate. Which is why you'll see me no, no, like I, this I and need it a, up, ink it up again. A little bit Maybe more narrow, direction. straight one, if, if, if you can find here. No, and not you don't have it. That's the only way yeah. to make it work. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's good to know that. Right. <clears throat> so, and, and when you're inking, roll and pick up, roll and pick up, roll and pick up like that. Because, again, once you've rolled part way and you've got an image on your roller, if you just go back and forth, back and no. forth, back and forth, all you're doing is reinforcing that image, you know. But if you pick it up and move it, you come down on a different part of the roller each time. I mean, in a in a print shop, we'd have great big rollers like that. I mean, you can roll this is even better. Cross giant plates, okay, thank you have you. huge rollers like this. But um, uh, this is it. <laughs> it. It comes out of retirement once a year when your sheets in town. Uh, no. Not, not, no. Maybe someday. I've worked in some nice shops. Sometimes he likes to keep the ink in the plate, so I'll let him decide on this one. We can always scrub it out later. Too fine. That little wheel come out. It must be detail time. Yeah. <laughs> this wouldn't good, be good for printing. It's too deep. Oh, let's try it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to print it by hand. We won't run it through the press.
Kafka, yes. Usually, is there a side of the engraving that you think it should be looked at? Do you like to look through the glass at the cutting There's when the piece is finished, or do you like looking at the cut side? Or they ask me uh, in Prague, shall we install it that way or that way? Yeah. And it depends on the light. If you are installed it that way, and the light bumps, so. Uh, here it's shiny. Yeah. It's not good for the engraving. Okay. If you show it from that side, so it doesn't hurt the lighting. So I, I'm often showing it from that side. Okay. Mm. But I'm just looking at this, for example, with the light through it, and you I can know. see it as a as a sculptural form. In yeah, some but uh, you see it here also. Yeah. Because this is glass. It's uh, even if it's deep engraved, it looks like. A relief. And so your your Kopetsky should be seen from the cut side. Yeah, this is uh, uh, something different. Yeah, this you have to look at it from from the cut side. Yeah. For this small details, this is too big. Uh, uh, That's about the size of my biggest wheel at home. <laughs> yeah, it's too small. I need big wheels. I think it's lunch time. 
Not it's yet. It's getting close. It's getting close. So I have to go back with a smaller wheel to make. I look for a smaller wheel? No, later. Later? Mm -hmm. I have to admit, that's one of the things I do love about engraving, is you can put it down and come back later. Yes. <laughs> you can't do that with 15 pounds of hot glass on the end of a pipe, but you can sure do it <laughs> with this. Yeah. This is why we are cold worker. So oh, I think we can leave it for a while, if you would like. As you wish. I'd you, love to try You to can, that. you yeah. can, yeah. Do it. Yeah, we'll get a, we'll get a print off that. <laughs> okay.